Hello friends, Tanya here with a video featuring the Spellbinders December 2021 Club Kits. In particular, the APG, the Glimmer of the Month, and the Clear Stamp and Die of the Month. This is the Enchanting Pocket Card and Envelope APG set. It makes this cute little card and an envelope. And it has all of these beautiful different options. You can make it fold over and create an envelope or you can make it not just be like a pocket. There's this gorgeous square and the different curved elements that you can use to create cutouts and beautiful filigree details. The embossed lines for the folding lines or the score lines for that uh, are detachable. You've got these cute little uh, hole protector items and these flowers and two leaves and they curve in opposite directions which is beautiful. I love it when we get options for directions. Here is what this looks like when you die cut it so that this will be a pocket card so it doesn't fold the envelope doesn't fold all the way. Here you can see the score line that I did include. I left out the top one and I am taking the crease lines and folding them backward and then forward in the direction that I actually want them to go. I find that this helps me get a very nice straight uh, creased line. So this is how they fit together. And I had used the dies the way I showed them to you, taping them in place with the best ever craft glue. No, not glue, tape. And I'm using the Barely Art Precision Glue here to glue the envelope shut. Just taking a moment here to get good adhesion. Now is a good time to mention that this is a really long video today. I hope you have a nice hot beverage and you're just chilling out watching this video. This inclusion card just slips nicely inside. Neither one of them has been scored to fold. I did create two layers the same way. Now this was kind of an afterthought. I wasn't going to create this layered piece. It would be best to die cut it at the same time so that you have it taped in exactly the same place. It's pretty darn close the way I did this, but not exact. I'm going to layer these three items together the vellum between them to create a card that has this vellum in the center. It, I think it looks perfect. I did add here these back to back. It did seem to work very nicely. I have to make a little bit of an adjustment so that the details in the center that fit over the vellum line up the best. And I do have to trim off a little bit off the bottom of this card. I made sure to glue the inside also. So I'm going to take a peek and look at how this looks the best. Decide which side to trim off the excess. And I just used my long bladed scissor for that. Fits in here perfectly. And these are both 80 pound card stocks that came in various card kits from the past. I have mine all organized in rainbow order and just pull from that when I need something. Next we're going to use some black watercolor paper. This is the Stonehenge Cold Press 140 pound black watercolor cardstock which I did get off of Amazon and I'm using some Versamark or some Juicy, some of the clear embossing ink to stamp these letters from the Color Outside the Lines Clear Stamp and Die of the Month Kit for December 2021. There are several letters. They will make many different sentiments and I heat emboss this with gold embossing powder. Next, I'm pulling out something I just got. I just got several tubes of the Daniel Smith Luminescent line of watercolors. So these are shimmery, colors of watercolor and they came in tubes and I purchased this Meaden watercolor pan from Amazon also and I panned each of those colors and let them cure for it took a couple weeks for them to get dry but I still have more watercolor in those tubes so I won't run out 
like in my lifetime. <laughs> I might share. I have a couple of daughter-in-laws who really enjoy watercoloring also. One of the amazing things about this die or excuse me, stamp set is that it has a coordinating die set and it cuts out all of these letters. I love that. So I'm going to take those and run them through my little sidekick. You can use whatever size machine you would like, but it is nice to know that it works on that small die cutting machine. The watercolor paper, you do have to be a little careful with your low tack tape. It will peel a layer off. I'm also going to do some um, more watercoloring with the lightest of the pinky reds. This one happens to be called Iridescent Garnet. The red that I use is Iridescent Russet and I will be using a gold. I'm using the Iridescent Gold. And I think I used the iridescent bronze at some point too in this video. And here I'm blending those two together, creating a little bit of a gradient across this splotch of watercolor. I didn't use the stamp. There's a stamp in the stamp set that does a splotch of color roughly in this shape. And the oval die there is the one that cuts out that stamped image. But we're going to cheat and use our watercolor here to do that. I am stamping the word friend from the same stamp set in the clear embossing ink and I'm going to emboss this with gold embossing powder also. I did use uh, my heat tool to make sure that was really nice and dry and then put used my um, cornstarch uh, embossing buddy type thing there, my anti-static powder tool to make sure that I didn't get a lot of extra gold. I will warn you, the black watercolor paper is a little more prone to have speckles, so make sure you use that anti-static anti powder tool. It makes a big difference. Now I'm going to carefully uh, tape the edges down. I don't want that to go over any of the image that I am keeping because of this propensity to peel up a little bit with the low tack tape and you can see how it's stuck to that tape there. Just wanna make sure it doesn't ruin anything that you are wanting to keep. I had tried to stamp the word friend. Oh, here I'm showing you the difference between white and black uh, cardstock card base to show you what the garnet watercolor color looks like on white and black. I had stamped the word friend in VersaFine Onyx Claire ink on the pink card base and then smeared it. It would have been beautiful. I actually really like this, ver the ver version I ended up with better, but the other would have been fine. So we're going to center the E on this card and had I been thinking I might have laid these all out on a piece of tape and then centered it that way. but. This works. The Y is just a little narrower than the H, so it doesn't com appear completely centered. That's okay. We'll live. <laughs> and it just says, hey friend. I kind of like that. It makes it work for any occasion. I have all of my um, mixes of Color Essentials gems here and I don't have a whole lot left. I may need to order some more of these here very soon. I'm using what's left of the brighter gold of the Gold Mix Color Essentials gems and I'm adding those to the very detailed area to add a little extra spice to this card. My thought is that you'll be able to write your sentiment either on the back or on the front and that this would be really sweet to give as a thank you gift or just a thinking of you or anything. Just a, just a cute little um, envelope and inclusion. I did figure out that you can fit some other things in this pocket. Before we go there though, we are going to add some spatter. I just wanted a little extra something, so I'm just going to go back and use that Garnet watercolor and the, um, I think I pulled out the gold too. I'm doing front and back. I could have done this much earlier, but I didn't know I wanted to do it till now. 
Now I'm taking the swatches that I had made of this watercolor to decide which one matches the embossing powder the best. And it turns out it was the iridescent gold. Now if you have the Gansai Tombi Starry Nights palette, you maybe don't need the metallic colors. And if you have the pearlescent watercolors from uh, Gansai Tombi, you probably also don't need these watercolors. I just really like the Daniel Smith quality and um, I found them on sale. Loving that. I kind of really love that watercolor palette too. I'll have that all linked in the description box below just in case you're interested. This is the almost completed. No, I keep thinking I want to add more. Now you'll discover through all of my projects today that I just couldn't stop. I would get to a point where I thought I was done and I wanted to add more. I'm taking some, this is handcrafted watercolor paper that I got in a Hero Arts kit. And I've slowly been using that up. I die cut all of my floral elements from the APG of, of the month for December. And I'm going to paint these. I decided to make the leaves gold and I'm using that same iridescent gold watercolor and um, just painting one side, just a quick slap on of the color. And there's just something about the way the black shines through or changes the color a little bit, makes it more rich and makes that shine even more intense. I'm doing the many petaled flower in the garnet and then I came back with the shimmery white. We're using the iridescent russet on the larger flower and I am using the garnet in the center, although you're not going to see that much later. I let these dry and then I started fiddling around with placement. Normally I do a group of three, but this really seemed to work out well with just the two of them. So I'm going to adhere the leaves first using the Barely Art Precision Glue. Just going to add some dabs of that and we'll glue that down. I don't want to glue it to the light pink insert, so I'm being careful to not have the glue touch that and we'll add that second leaf using the same method. And I am going to add a little dimension to the second card and well, actually not card, flower, to the first and second flower. I'm just using some coaster blank um, scraps. Now, every time I have I say anything about coaster blank, someone asks me what they are and where they can get them. Coaster blanks are simply a pulp board blank coaster. Oftentimes you get these at the bar and or at a restaurant and they have advertising on them or some kind of logo. People have been getting custom ones for weddings and that kind of thing. I just get the blanks and I've been getting them through Amazon through a company, company called Cats and I'll have that linked in the description box below also. I am making sure that that flower doesn't stick to the inside of the envelope, so I stuck a piece of scratch paper in there to catch any of the loose glue. Next, I wanted to add some centers to these flowers. They just didn't seem right without a center. I tried the dull, the darker gold from the gold mix. However, it's too small. So I dug through my stash and I'm going to use the Midnight Ball bobbles from Trinity Stamps. They've got some really large bobbles in that set. I think there's four or five sizes of these different bobbles and I add a scattering of them throughout that floral arrangement. I think they're just perfect with this shimmery dark car color stock, hmm, excuse me, dark watercolor cardstock look on this card. And look at that. You can fit a gift card on the bottom portion of this card, which means you could fold it inside and make this a gift card holder. You also can fit a cocoa packet or a tea packet or some other small packet inside of that envelope. Perfect gift. Next, we're going to use the Botanical Crest Glimmer Hot Foil Kit of the month for December. It's got this beautiful wreath, which cuts, also has dies that cut the outside and the inside, and two sentiment blocks that also have dies that cut them out. 
The foil that came with the kit this month is blush. It's this beautiful rose gold-ish type color. I'm going to take a square that is about four and a half inch square of the foil and tape that and the glimmer foil die or plate to this 80 pound white super smooth cardstock. I do need to use one shim in my system and I have put it on the heated up platform, set the timer, run it through my platinum and this is what I got. It's a beautiful viney uh, wreath which looks very romantic to me. You could do all kinds of things with this. This one I am going to die cut both the outside and the inside. You could make this a peek through card and just cut the center. You could create a solid wreath by just doing the outside edge die cut or you could dye that or excuse me glimmer this repeatedly in different colors on a card base that would be beautiful too there's all kinds of ways to use this my best way or best advice for die cutting this center is taking that flat spot that sticks in between the vines and use that as your location marker so to speak <laughs> and then just move it around until you get it right this is die cut from the large die of the month from November 2021. It's not ready quite yet in the shop. If there's any extras, they often will post those after the 20th, 20th of the month. However, the April 2021 uh, set that coordinates with that is available. And I do have that linked. If I will add the right link later once it's available. I die cut both of those pieces in pink and black with <clears throat> and now I am glimmer hot foiling the happy birthday sentiment with the rose or excuse me with the blush foil and I'm going to die cut this and I just used the center piece that fell was a fallout from the wreath so I didn't even have to get an extra scrap of paper. Now I didn't ultimately end up using the white version. It does look beautiful. Um, I am going to use a different color though cardstock. Next I am taking a little bit of the pink, excuse me, the garnet <clears throat> and the russet shimmery watercolor, iridescent watercolor, and I'm putting swashes of it on this cardstock and I'm going to use that to die cut these little tiny flowers to decorate the wreath. Now I didn't I, I should have grabbed maybe something a little brighter, but I, I still really like how this turned out. I'm doing both colors because I want both colors of flowers on the wreath. And I'm going to dry this thoroughly before I die cut them. You don't want to die cut wet or damp paper because it will tear and not cut as nicely. Here they all are die cut and popped out into a container. And then I'm going to pull out the uh, color outside the lines stamp and die set again. And we're going to do a little heat embossing tone on tone on a piece of four and a half by six and a half inch white cardstock. I believe I used a heavier weight because I plan to do some watercoloring on this also. I'm stamping all of these flowers and there's four of these flowers in the stamp set. They also happen to have silhouette dies or fill in, not dies, silhouette stamps so that you can stamp the background or the outline and then fill it in with the solid image stamp. I'm not going to do that. I have stamped these all over the cardstock and I poured the white satin pearl embossing powder over it and I melted that quickly. And now we are going to use the same watercolor that we used before. I'm doing a dry fit of my card here. I'm trying to decide where I want the border pieces to go. I am going to glue these together using some Barely Art Precision glue. And I'm going to use the embossing edges on that loopy, lacy border to help guide me where exactly to put this die cut and embossed line edge pink p 
piece. And then I can decide where I need those to be exactly. Well, before I do that though, now we're gonna do some water coloring on those blossoms. I'm using three colors. I'm using the garnet, the russet, and I'll come in with some shimmery white. The, oh, I think it's called pearlescent white watercolor. And I just went through and tried to fairly evenly space all, all the different colors. I started with the pink, now I'm going in with the pearlescent white, and I'll come in with the russet. These come in, come together very quickly. I think it only took me two or three minutes to watercolor all of these flowers. They would be fairly easy to fussy cut too. There aren't coordinating dyes for these blossoms, but the letter dyes are the ones that would have been the hardest to fussy cut. So if I had to choose between the flowers and the letters, the letters are definitely the ones I would have wanted to have as dyes. You can see that shimmer and it looks beautiful on white in this soft background. I let that air dry before I started trying to get this exactly the way I wanted it. I'm going to line that top edge on it with the the top edge of the borders with the top edge of the card. I, that just seems to be the best way to line them up. Now these are long enough to do a slimline card, which is really convenient that we have the ability to do any size card since this is a eight and a half inch long section. Beautiful. I took that to my guillotine trimmer and trimmed all the excess off. I am going to pop that up, I think, on, on some coaster blank dimension. Here comes the vellum again. I die cut the outer edge of the wreath with the coordinating die. And I'm going to just adhere that right to the back of this glimmered and die cut wreath. Just going to line up the edges. It's not as tough as you might think because this is such an irregularly shaped wreath, it comes together quite easily. Now that I have my wreath, I'm still figuring out my placement. Playing around with that, I want it to overlap all of the different sections and not coordinate exactly with the borderline. Here's those coaster blanks. That's gonna add a little height and a little extra stability. If there had been any warping from the watercolor, which is always a risk when you watercolor on not watercolor paper. Just using my Misty here to add a little extra weight and get that to adhere nicely. I added some little pieces of coaster blank behind that. You could use uh, foam tape, you could use extra cardstock, however you would like. This is um, just all of the examples of colors that I used to glimmer hot foil these sentiments just trying to decide which of them looks the best. And I think I settled on the dark red. I think that pops quite nicely. I am going to take the larger sentiment and adhere that to the inside of the card later. And I did use the same color as the sentiment on the outside of the card. That says happy birthday and I think wishing you a magical year to come, something like that. I took all of those little flowers and I adhered them to the wreath using my Barely Art Precision glue. I did not film the entire process of finding placement of all of these little flowers. That would have taken forever. <laughs> I do tend to take a little time figuring out my placement. Now I made the same flowers again with black watercolor paper and the same technique of painting them with the, the iridescent watercolor. I did add a little bit of the bronze or antique gold in addition to the iridescent gold to the leaves just to add a little more depth. I just wanted that little bit of two-toneness to this. I'm going to adhere these flowers directly to the vellum but I am going to add a little bit of dimension behind this flower. I'm going to take a two, no, one piece of coaster blank and add that to the back just to pop it up a little bit above the other two flowers. 
sometimes I need a little dimension. There was a whole lot of space in the center of that wreath and the sentiment all by itself looked so lonely that I had to add some flowers to this to make it a little more full and rich and make it fit the design better. It's kind of got that shabby chic look going. Um, very, very feminine. I'm going to add the sentiment with a little piece of coaster blank on the back of that also. Trim that up and glue that down. I am finding the tweezers and pokey tools and pickup sticks. All of those things come in very handy when you're working with tiny elements. And I have big clumsy fingers, so yeah. <laughs> Next, I am going to find a spot for these last couple of flowers. And I decided to pull out this Love Potion Dream Drops from Nouveau. Yes, Spellbinders carries some of the Nouveau Crystal Drops. There's, I think, probably nine or ten colors. You can check those out. I had this in my stash, and again, with that iridescent pearlescence to it. I thought that would fit the card so, so well. And I can make the centers of the flowers as big as I need to. I am going to tap that down just a little bit because I wanted them a little flatter. And I should have waited until these dried. Instead, I decided to, immediately after I put those dream drops on, glue the sentiment to the inside of the card. The only problem here is that the weight of the extra big drops of dream drops made these kind of slide to one side. So yeah, I did ultimately get that where I wanted it, but it took a little work. For our last project, we're going to do a slimline card and I'm going to start out using the Fluted Classics Slimline. This just came out. Um, there's a whole line of these Fluted Classic dies. Um, there's, and I'm going to use this pearlescent paper uh, from Craft Perfect, also a tonic product. And I'm going to die cut it using this Fluted Classic Slimline in the largest size. This will create a card front. It will fit the entire card front of a three and a half by eight and a half inch card base. And I love the way the details show on this pearlescent cardstock. A lot of specialty cardstocks, whether it's mirror or pearlescent um, or any other specialty cardstock, they really take well to the embossing and extra detail on the um, some of these dies. I did die cut the middle size rectangle and we're going to, out of watercolor paper, again the black watercolor paper, I am going to stamp these flowers in gold uh, embossing powder. Sorry, we're gonna stamp them with a clear embossing ink and then emboss them with a gold embossing powder. And then I am going to watercolor those also. I put this watercolor piece in my Misty and I am a, putting a liberal amount of the anti-static powder tool on there using my big mop brush to sweep away the extra powder and my bag is simply cornstarch in an old sock and I've folded over the end and have a bulldog clip holding it shut so I can refill it as needed. Super easy, super um, not a problem with my asthma. The talcum powder stuff, I, it would make me cough so bad. I had to quit using it and so I invented my own. Well, probably not invented. That's probably how all of, all of this started. And I didn't even have to change the orientation of these stamps. I just flipped to the other side and did the stamping again. It is winter here and my heat is going full blast and my house is warm for the first time in decades. Oh my gosh, in the winter time. We normally heat with wood and since we are gone, both of us work, my husband and I both work and we don't have kids at the house anymore, nobody's here to stoke the wood stove most of the time. And last year, we lost our chimney. <laughs> In February, which is like the coldest time of year for us anyway, in northern Minnesota. So that is a long way around to say that my embossing ink 
dry super fast on this watercolor paper, probably because we have our heating uh, system going and it dries out the air. We have a heat pump and two Stephis units, and those are pretty awesome. Wow, I got off track. That has nothing to do with stamping other than drying out my embossing ink. <laughs> I hope you aren't having challenges with your heating because if you are, that would have been super interesting to you. However, the last segment of the flowers, I'm going to use a little bit of acetate here. This is just a packaging that I had laying on my desk, probably honestly from the large die of the month kit for November. <clears throat> And I'm using that to help place my stamps without having to clean them before I do that. This way I can just peel them off the lid, place them where I want them, close the lid, pick them up, and then take the acetate out. We are going to stamp those. And each time I stamp them three times because, again, I need lots of ink on there to catch the embossing powder before we emboss it. I have been using the... You may not, if you've been watching me for very long, you may notice that this is the same coffee filter I've been using literally for years. I keep two coffee filters in my drawer full of embossing powders. And since it is a coffee filter, it does not ever get staticky. It never has embossing powder cling to it. So don't feel like you have to have a fresh coffee filter every time you use your embossing powder. You can just shake off any extra bits and keep using it. It works fantastic. I am going to use my microfiber cloth. I found a dry spot on it and I vigorously removed the cornstarch so that it is a nice bright bold black watercolor paper and I'm going to take those same three colors the shimmery white or the irid excuse me pearlescent white the iridescent garnet and the iridescent russet and we're going to paint all of these blooms to create a vibrant background for our card again does not take very long i recently splurged and got myself a set of these silver brush black velvet watercolor paint brushes um i had been gifted I had been given a gift card for a one of the um, shops recently, and I got these brushes as part of that. Love it. Had been wanting them for a long time. Finally invested in them, and I'm going to take extra special care of them. I won't be abusing them like I've abused all of my other watercolor brushes. Just quickly applying the paint to each of these. And I could have gone back with a little bit of damp paper towel and wiped off the embossing powder, but I found I didn't really need to. I also spattered the background with a couple colors of gold watercolor here. And I'm cleaning up my work surface, just a spritz of my soapy water. Next, we're going to add some letters. I have all of the letters I need here. Some of them need repeats. So instead of peeling them off, I'm just going to stamp it on each end, cut those apart just for ease of handling, and emboss them in gold on heavyweight white cardstock. You could do this on a lower, uh, on a lighter cardstock. However, since again, we are watercoloring on it and there is a little bit of water, involved I decided to use a this is either a hundred pound or 120 pound I can't remember all the fingers there that was me counting the letters to figure out which ones needed pink which ones needed red in the flowers I was trying to alternate those we're going to have this some extra letters when we're done but that's okay I only painted what I needed to and I will have some extras to use on a different project the most complicated letter of this grouping is the O. It has an inside piece. You don't have to cut the inside out, but I wanted to. So I carefully applied that with some uh, of the best ever craft tape. And I die cut all of my letters. 
Now I'm going to start assembling our card. I am putting a little bit of coaster blank behind the black watercolor panel. I want that to be a little elevated and as you can see I die cut out the center of that red velvet piece of cardstock so I don't waste that. I can use it for a, a number of other things. You can do that if you'd like. If you would, if you find that to be too much of an extra step and you're not worried about using all of that paper up, don't feel guilty. You do you. I just uh, wanted to have the option to use it. It does make a pretty cool frame too. You, I could have done this in the reverse order. I could have put the watercolor paper down, added a little extra dimension behind the red part, and created a frame for these as a recessed image. That is a good idea, actually. Hmm. I like how this turned out, though. I'm not regretting that at all. So now it's time to line these up to create our sentiment. <clears throat> I'm going to use my grid mat <coughs> to get these all lined up evenly on one line and get them squished together. Here I'm using the card to actually tell me how close they need to be get to be. Hmm, how close they need to be together for my spacing. I did take out my die and try to use that as an edge to slide these against, but you know how it is when you're die cutting with a long thin piece of metal it tends to get a little bowing in the center so i couldn't actually slide them down against the die moving on right back to just using the grid line on my mat now that i have them all lined up i'm going to use this piece of washi tape to pick them all up rub my fingers on that a few times to get them well adhered and since it's low tack tape they will remove quite easily just doing a dry fit to make sure my sentiment will fit in the center of my card panel. And then I'll use some Barely Art Precision Glue to adhere all of these down in one fell swoop. This way you aren't having to fiddle and fuss anywhere but on the grid mat as you practice. I love how this worked out. So I'm just going to give that a few seconds to get a good adherence. And FYI, this washi tape is some really really low tack so it didn't stick extra hard to finish off this card we are i thought about doing the sentiments that we've hot foiled but it just didn't lay well inside the card if i had turned the card in the other direction it would have worked better but we have landscape not portrait I tried playing with a few different color combinations and then I thought, you know what? We have flower stamps we can use. I started to do it in the Misty. I was showing you that it does fit in your Misty even as a completed card. However, I'm going to use a clear block since I knew I was going to use the VersaFine um, Claire ink, which stamps beautifully the first time every time. I just lined up the flowers and it only took two passes to stamp these and <clears throat> have this beautiful border along the board bottom of the inside of the card. I like to make sure I clean those stamps right away otherwise that particular kind of ink tends to dry and stain your stamps and sometimes transfer the next time you stamp them. That's the only reason I would worry about it. If it didn't transfer, if it just simply caused a stain, it wouldn't matter. Um, now this dried pretty quickly. And here we are with the iridescent watercolor again. I'm going to alternate between the garnet, the russet, and the pearlescent white. And just go every third flower, which makes it pretty simple. That way I don't have to clean my brush repeatedly. I just add a little bit of water probably every time. You can't see my jar full of water to the side. I actually keep a jar of water on my desk at all times. And no, I haven't spilled it a dozen times. I think I've spilled it once in the last three years, which is pretty remarkable because I am a klutz. Let's admit that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that finishes off the last project I made today. I hope you liked it. Do you love that? I, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Here is a recap of all of the projects I did today. 
I hope you enjoyed them. Let me know which one you found the most inspiring or which technique you found the newest or the most inspiring to you. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, check that description box below. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you haven't had a chance to do that. Here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye.